Don't ignore the red flags. That's the topic we're going to talk about here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook. Get rid of your problems, not your partner. This particular topic came in because a good friend of mine, we were having a good conversation, and she was basically telling me about a gentleman who contacted her on one of her social medias, and he saw her business that she's putting uh, in place, and he just contacts her and talks about the fact that he would be open to buying all of her inventory. Didn't ask her how much it was, didn't ask her how much inventory she had, but he told her, I love all the things that I've seen, willing to buy everything that you have. And so they talked for a second, you know, um, and instantly he's into the conversation about how beautiful she is and um, is she a religious person and all the money that he has and he made his first million dollars at a certain age and all this kind of stuff. Now you tell me, a gentleman that comes at you that way, what is he really about? What is he really trying to tell you? Um, fortunately for her, she says she made it very, very clear that if you're interested in buying the inventory, I can figure it out and you can purchase it, but that's it. That's all this is about. I'm not, I'm not looking to get in a relationship, not trying to find anyone. This, we're going to keep this totally professional, totally on a business level. She told him, you know, like they're going to talk the next day or something. And he had talked about, uh, she had told him not to call her during a certain time because she had uh, a conference call. You know, he called her when she was on her conference call. <laughs> she ignored him, but he did call. What is he really saying? See, these are the things that where I'm talking about the red flags that I've seen too many ladies ignore. First off, if you if he's willing to tell you how much money he's made and all this kind of stuff, he's not looking for a serious relationship, first off. Um, because a guy that's looking for a serious relationship wants to know, no matter how much money he has, he wants to know, are you looking to get into a relationship with him or with his uh, money and his material things. I'm talking about a guy that wants to get in a serious relationship here. A guy that that's, wants to flaunt all that he has, has one intention, to take you to bed. She understood that. Now, that's not saying it couldn't evolve into something later, but that's not his intent. He's really seen can you be bought and are you willing to be bought? And if so, trust me, he's not going to turn you down. He will take advantage of it. Now, where the relationship will progress, who knows? Chances are pretty good. Nowhere. You'll just will have slept with him and that's about it. You might find out he doesn't even have the stuff that he said. He's again trying to test you to see if you're easy to be bought. Because a guy, again, like I said, that has all the material stuff and is looking for a relationship really, truly wants to know you, where you're headed, what you're doing with your life. I had a, a young lady that uh, we're talking about, and she deals with a lot of people that have money. And she said, and but she was talking about guys that have a lot of money do look for candy ladies. In other words, beautiful women. And you don't necessarily have to have a lot yourself because they're looking for candy, you know, something that sparkles, something that they can flaunt in front of everyone. Else. In, in other words, something they can add to the rest of their collection. Again, are you looking to be in a relationship like that? But that's kind of what they're looking for. And she said in a lot of wealthy guys, the reason that they look for just that and they're not really looking for women that have money is because they already have it. 
So they don't need money. So that's not going to impress them. So in their, in their case, they do look for the external stuff, which a lot of us will say that's shallow. Or whatever. But that's what they're looking for because they say, I don't need money. I'm not saying good, bad, right or wrong. That's the truth or whatever. But this is what she specializes in. And she says, almost in every case, that's the challenge. And she was talking about that's why a lot of women that have a lot of wealth have a hard time connecting with guys that have a lot of wealth. Because again, the guys are usually not looking for someone with money because they have it. But they do want to someone else a prize that they could take around with them now that's a little off the topic here but uh i just wanted to cover that that you gotta really understand where people are coming from what's the ulterior motives and if you want to be a part of that do you want to be bought would you want to be that young lady that you know the only reason that he's with you is because you're candy and some ladies are okay with that and for me the reason i say it's dangerous is because your external will not always be there. And if he's with you for the external, we don't have to go any further. You know that relationship is not going to last. As soon as the stuff starts to disappear, the external, he will disappear. Why? Because that's why he's with you. So, but back to the conversation we're having. The good thing is the good friend of mine's was instantly like, and she was telling me, oh, that's what I was going to get to. The fact that he calls her when he knows he's just on a conference call. Do you understand what he just did? He's testing. But not only that, he's letting you know he doesn't respect you. He doesn't honor you. Why? You told him not to call during this time period because I have a business, a conference call that I will be on. So do not call me at that time. And he specifically calls you at that time. He's also a control freak because he's letting you know, I'm going to call the shots in this relationship. See, this is where I'm talking about the red flags, where you have to be able to sit back and really look at things and not put your head in a cloud and be like, well, he really cares. And he's really, no. People will tell you exactly how they feel by how they treat you. A gentleman that will do that doesn't honor or respect you. You don't have to get into a relationship. That's why, again, for me, I always laugh when people say, well, it's so hard to get to know people. It takes time and patience. It doesn't. Really, it doesn't. It only takes a lot of time when you're not sure where you are going yourself and you're not paying attention to the people that you're coming across and again that's not to say everybody fits in any particular category because you guys know i don't get into all that but i'm just saying the red flags when they're there they're there and again that doesn't mean they can't clean up later but do you want to be there and get in a relationship with the red flags blaring at you from the start and hoping that one day they won't be red flags. Too many people do that and then end up miserable. And then later they talk about, I, he changed. No, he didn't. Like in this instance, I was telling her, some people will get in a relationship with that young man. He'll dishonor. He'll disrespect. He'll treat her like, uh, uh, a material thing and then she'll say and I don't understand yes you do because he did that from the start immediately within the first or second conversation you had with him he lets you see that he didn't respect you don't take long to figure that out doesn't take long to figure people out pay attention people will tell you everything you need to know that's why again I get in the conversation where I hear people We'll talk about that you have to live with a person uh, to get to know them. No, you don't. You got to pay attention. They say, well, they can, they can act a certain way. No, they don't. People will be people. You get to know them. Watch what they do. If they're a slob, you know. You don't have to live with them to figure that out. But you do have to pay attention. 
He's dishonoring you. You don't have to be in a relationship and live in the same house with him to see that he dishonors you. You can watch the way he treats other people and see that he's dishonoring, which means he will dishonor you. Again, that's another one of those that's just amazing to me to watch people um, or date people, that they see the person dishonors, disrespects other people, and they believe, but he would never do that to me. Yes, he will. And your turn is coming. It's not will he, it's when. Because the fact is, it's what he does when he gets to a certain level as far as his thought process. You just haven't hit that particular level yet. But the moment you do, you'll get to experience, as they say, experience the raft. You'll get to experience that. So my point in this video, and fortunately for her, and I'm glad at least when her and I talked, that she fully grasped it. Um, she told me he's been um, sending little messages, um, say hi all the time, and, and she's been ignoring um, all his posts. So she's like, She's going to uh, block him totally as far as all the social media and stuff because he's still, um, she's trying to be nice, but he's just basically doing the same because he's not an honoring individual. But she was saying how um, I was telling her, I said, back in the day when I was out there acting a fool and I told her, and, and you guys heard me talk about this recently too. I said, guys have been taught and most guys believe, and it's unfortunate most guys believe, that whatever you tell them as a woman, they don't believe it. And they believe they can break you down. Now, some people call that because they like to challenge, whatever you want to call it. But the bottom line is, they don't believe what you say. And so for that reason, and like I told her, when I was out there acting a fool, because you're out there, if you're if you're out there dealing with a lot of different women, I could keep throwing my hook in the water. That's what I told her. I said, you throw a lot of lines in the water when you're out there fishing and you're waiting for someone to grab the bait. I said, so of course, why wouldn't he keep hollering at you, saying hi and speak? What, 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 what does he have to lose? Except you may nibble. <laughs> you may start biting on the line. You may get curious about that lifestyle that he's trying to sell you on. And you might be able to, to say, well, maybe I can change him or maybe I can experience a little bit of that. You're being bought. And again, don't don't give me if if that's something you want to do and you want to experience that and see what that's like. Go ahead and enjoy, and enjoy it. I'm not here and never will be a person trying to tell you how to live your life. I'm just telling you, be aware of what you're walking into, as I started off with. Don't ignore the red flags. And then later, when you get blanketed with those red flags, all of a sudden, he changed. No, he didn't. Those red flags were always there. Don't ignore them. So again, I was telling her, I said, so he, does, he has nothing to lose by keep throwing stuff at you and, and see if you're nibble on the line. Because in the meantime, he got a whole bunch of other women he's saying hi to to see who nibbles. So, again, this is not to, to, to badmouth anyone just because they have material stuff or don't have material stuff because games are played by people with and without money. I'm just saying that a, a guy that usually has all that, got everything going on, and is looking for a relationship, a real relationship, he's not flaunting it. Because again, he wants to make sure you want to be in a relationship with him and not what he has. Again, those that are willing to flaunt is because they have one agenda. Take it down. <laughs> and again, as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Again, do not ignore red flags. They're there for a reason. There's a reason they're called red flags. When a person crosses the things that you believe that's going to jeopardize your integrity, your character, learn to say no. Even if you've written this exciting adventure that you believe that you can have with them, say no. Because that temporary fix that you think you're going to get now will ultimately be a pain that you will fully regret 
and wish you had never crossed that line. There's a song, what is it, um, the guy talks about, um, I wish I'd have never, I wish I'd have never met you. But in his particular case, he also got what he, he asked for. And he also got what he deserved. Some people may say that's wrong, but um, I, the reason I say that is because she was a married woman. And he messed around with her. But she decided to stay with her husband. And that's why he was saying, I wish I'd have never met you. It has nothing to do with meeting her. It has to do with the fact that you got in a relationship with her. You were willing to cross that line, those red flags. That's a red flag. She's married. You were willing to cross that line. Willing to destroy a, a family to try to get something you want. Hmm. It backfired. That's why I said he got what he deserved. I'm never going to be a person that's going to be on your side if you jump in the middle of a marriage. It's just me. I take marriage very, very seriously. If that's a relationship that they've dissolved because of the two of them, and for me personally, and you guys know I've talked about this before too, they're going to have to be divorced. Not talking about it, not thinking about it, done. Because as long as you're still married, and that means legally married, don't tell me we're in the process of six months. Well, I'll talk to you in six months. Because legally, they're still married. That, for me, is a red flag. You cross that line, and they decide to stay with their partner. You got what you deserved. The red flags were there. And again, that might sound cruel, but I'm just, I just believe when you make your bed, you're going to have to lie in it. And don't look and get, try to get other people to sympathize with the decision that you made. That's called reaping what you sow. So again, don't ignore the red flags. Don't cross those lines. Too many people running around here in this world that's available for you to have to cross a line with a red flag. All right, again. I'll talk to you guys. Uh, for those of you that we talk on Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you next week, next Thursday. For those of you who we talk about uh, self-love, I look forward to talking to you on uh, Monday. Uh, hopefully, you got a chance to, to go through the self-love. I talked about that. I'm in the process. I'm getting ready to uh, write a book. I'm going to come out in the, uh, here within the next few months dealing with the, um, the 21, 21 uh, Days to Self-Love. Because um, we were we just went through uh, three episodes, three weeks of uh, a book that I did read. It was called the Twenty One Days, the Twenty One Day Challenge, Twenty One, Twenty One, Twenty One Days of of Self Love Challenge, and uh, by Ingrid uh, Lindbergh, and we kind of went through her book and uh, and talked about the different topics. But I think there's some things that that can be added to that. I love the concept that she came up with because, again, the 21 days, as they tell you, any habit can be changed in the 21 days. In other words, you do anything consecutively for 21 days, it becomes a habit. And that's where that kind of key comes in, talking about the 21 days. And so we can get you for 21 days consecutive to love you some you. In 21 days, you love you some you. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, I also com completed my uh, video series. You can go over to ronsimplifiedmyersonline.com. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online, uh, Myers, M-Y-E-R-S, because most people, again, spell it M-E-Y. Uh, take a look. I have uh, uh, a code on there where it allow you to basically get all three series that I just created for almost the same price that you would get one. It's because it's a new release that I want to get it in as many hands as possible. Again, I'm not sure how, how long I'll leave it at that price. It is what it is. I don't, I don't try to play the games to try to, you better get it today. It is what it is. That's where it's at right now. Take a peek, go over there, look at it. Uh, one of them is the series I redid my book and I put it in video form. The other one is uh, Finding Love. For those that are looking for love, want to know what love is and then uh, how to find it. And the other one is committed relationships, which is for those of you who are interested in, in, in strengthening the one that you're in or preparing yourself so that you can be in that committed relationship. So again, I look forward to talking to you guys. Make sure whatever you're doing, you're having fun. And I will see you guys soon. Take care and enjoy. Bye-bye.